And all of that NSA data grabbed illegally can be used as top Secret Service agent, now retired, Dan Bongino, has told the public. And he quit uh, a few years ago because he said he couldn't be around the un-American, anti-free market, you didn't build it garbage. And he said, look, I can't tell you what I saw behind the scenes, but it's worse than you know. And that article that we put out last week with the video of him talking about it went viral via DrudgeReport.com. And we're on the great site Drudge all the time, but I mean, this thing went viral. Three million readers on our article alone. It got syndicated everywhere. No way of knowing how many. It really touched a nerve with people. Obama's Secret Service agent, it's worse than people know, and I'm not trying to scare you. We only got 10 minutes with him because he's, 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 he's in, in a gear up for his book about to come out, but he's on for like an hour when it does come out in a few weeks. Dan Bongino, Bongino.com. He's running, obviously, for higher office. We'll tell you about that briefly, but the time we've got... Come on, tell us. I mean, I know you're already getting threats. You're getting your office broken into. Stuff's going on. I think not telling us is going to put you in more danger than than telling us. What is it that's so horrible that's worse than we know, worse than we think at the White House? You were the head guy that ran his foreign trips. We know that's the most important position in the Secret Service because that's seen as the most dangerous is, is when the president goes overseas. I mean, tell us who Obama really is. Uh, we've got uh, Harry Lennox coming out saying he's basically an actor and that he secretly trained him uh, 18 years ago. Dan Bongino, what's really going on here? Well, here's the deal, Alex. You even have uh, new things coming out with the financial monitoring, which you're seeing today with the agency, the CIA, with financial transactions overseas. So think of the picture right now, the government, you know, this big government uh, mentality, big government president. Uh, they now have your emails, uh, allegedly just the subject and headers and the to and from, which I, I strongly would uh, debate. They now have uh, consumer financial data from any uh, any transactions you may have you may have made overseas, and the consumer financial uh, uh, relations board right now. They're they're internally they're developing a whole profile of credit card company data as well. So we're getting into this society right now, the surveillance society. Where, as I said on that clip, which got something like I think even the YouTube got four hundred plus thousand views. You're in a society now where your life is really no longer your life. It's your life, which is available for public com consumption at the government's behest. They have the key to your personal and private life, which I find really frightening. And when I said worse than you know, that's exactly what I meant, because here's what's really bothersome about this whole thing, Alex. Um, it really doesn't seem that anybody's really that disturbed about it, besides, you know, folks in the libertarian, I think, wing of the party that, uh, you know, that, that are that are raising the flag here. But, uh, you know, like I said, last time I was on the show, I had a bunch of your listeners uh, jump on and and, and, uh, and follow me. And I, they're really active and they're really getting involved in saying we want answers. And, uh, you well, know, specifically, I, I talked to a Secret Service agent, and this is pretty unbelievable, but it's true. I don't even like saying this because it could, but I mean, he didn't give me anything secret. He just said, keep doing what you're doing. It's horrible. Almost all of us are freaked out. It's unbelievable. Obama is basically worse than you're even saying. I, I, I heard this about a year ago and then from another Secret Service agent through another person I know. And, and I mean, they wouldn't even talk to me except through somebody else's phone. And, and, and then one of them passed a message on to me and they said, look, you're right. It's bad. I mean, what's going on? I mean, we know Hillary had like crack pipes on the on the uh, Christmas tree back in the 90s and, and like Mao Zedong. We know seven of the czars publicly praised Mao Zedong, the greatest mass murderer in history. Tell us like you said you had to quit. It was so horrible, but you can't tell us. I mean, tell us what Obama's like. Well. Listen, I don't want to get into his personal stuff because it would be inappropriate. I mean, it did take an oath, but I, I feel the need to sound the siren here because, uh, you know, the Secret Service, it, there, there was some uh, um, hack on the Republican side. Of course, a lot of the establishment folks tend to come after me as well. That took a shot at me and, and my book, uh, uh, Life Inside the Bubble. They took a, he took a shot at me basically saying that, oh, you know, this, you shouldn't do that because then the Secret Service and the, it'll, it'll damage the sensitive relationship between the Secret Service and the President. And Alex, you know, when I say worse than you know, this fog of scandals encompassing just about every cabinet agency, whether it's e, uh, EPA, uh, the HHS, you know, DOJ, they're all encompassed by scandals. I don't have time to go into each and every one of them. Most of them are public. But even look at something like the Secret Service. You know, they were used as some kind of a pawn in this shutting down the White House to White House tours. And you may say, oh, well, that's an insignificant thing. You know, they just blame the Secret Service. We all inside knew it wasn't true. We just looked, looked for an excuse. But what's to say later on that 
you know, he doesn't say to the Secret Service guys, you know, something to the effect of, you know, hey, listen, I want those guys, you know, arrested for protesting or something. And they feel the need to, you know, somehow comply. I mean, we can't go forward in a society where we're not bedrock in some sense of constitutional law. You know, law by discretion and rule by discretion is no rule at all. It's monarchy. I mean, it's almost near anarchy at some point. So we can't have this. It's, it's, it's the responsibility of people like me, I believe, to speak out. Some may disagree, and that's fine, but sure. I'm not going to get buried six feet deep knowing I was part of the problem. Sure, sure, Dan. I don't want to know about Obama's boyfriends. What I want to know about is, is, is you said you, basically the anti-American, you didn't build it, socialist commie stuff. And, and I, know, I know you've sworn an oath and made agreements and stuff, you know, to not spill the beans on what went on inside. But there's a reason they're breaking into your office and threatening you and following your family around and stuff. They're scared of what you know. And so... Uh, I mean, it's almost dangerous for me to be here pushing you to say anything. But, I mean, what what else can you tell us when you say it's worse than we know? I mean, I know Secret Service agents went public against Clinton and then even got photos out of the Mao Zedong on the Christmas tree and the crack pipes. I mean, what type of weirdos hang crack pipes and communist leaders on the Christmas tree? These are screwballs. Well, there's and they're surrounded by, as I said on another show, these acolytes that don't want to tell him he's doing anything wrong. And they don't want to speak up and say, you know, sir, maybe this isn't right that we handle this. And surrounding yourself with figures that view you as like some kind of messianic figure is really troublesome. I mean, that's the kind of thing we see in, 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 in you know, third world countries with these leaders. So no one wants to kind of stop the runaway train right now. The only thing we have going for us is, the, you know, a, a sadly political approval ratings right now are so bad. His power is almost being taken away. His de facto power by the minute, but the, yeah, the administration, and I, I really, I couldn't contribute to it anymore. And I was very careful to not hurt him personally um, with any, uh, you know, deeply insider information. And that's what bothered me so much about some of the criticism. You know, this could have been an easy get rich scheme, you know, Alex and I chose not to, you know, to uphold some sense of dignity with the office. And I don't think they've treated me the same way in return. I, mean, I even waited to get office detail to leave the job just to not cause any unnecessary controversy. I've been very delicate with the whole issue, and I, I really... So they should leave you alone and not and not follow you around and make threats and break in your office? Yeah, I mean, but there's nothing I've done uh, unethically or anything like that. I mean, I, I'm running because I really feel like there's a very deep problem where there's like, we are literally in a constitutional crisis right now where the president just ignores his own fiat, and sure. it doesn't seem like anybody's saying anything. I mean, where are you hearing it? But what is it that being around him freaks out Secret Service so bad? Uh, it's, it's, it's more that it's, it's not, it, it doesn't seem to me like anybody is willing to say, you know, like the Clinton administration, where at one point he had, you know, Dick Morris telling him. But is he was, like the devil? I mean, I mean, we see uh, flies coming out of his mouth. No, what no, has no. Secret Service agents uh, literally ru running the other direction through the wall like a Looney Tunes character? Well, again, I only so much, I know it's crazy. No, there's no there's none of that stuff. I'm joking. It's a joke. Yeah, I, it's know, a joke. I know. I know. I know. I know. Well, I know. Dan, let me ask you these questions. We have an article up on Infowars.com. Obamacare fix affirms Obama is absolute dictator with power to change laws as he pleases. Even the former head of the DNC uh, has come out and said that he, this is dictator behavior. How can he now claim his own law? He'll decide what to enforce and not to enforce. Yeah, that's. I mean, this isn't the first time, though, either. You had the exemption for Congress. You had the out-of-pocket requirements he waived. You had the income requirements he waived. You had the employer mandate he waived. I mean, this is the odd part about this, this thick sense of, of, of politics on the side where they say, oh, it's the law of the land, and then they turn around five minutes later and they ignore the law of the land, which the law of the land, I would argue, initially wasn't constitutional, but as an extra slap in the face, even once they declared constitutional what wasn't constitutional, he unconstitutionally violated it. If that's like making your head spin right now, I assure you it's making my head spin too. The great irony being the cancellations that they're trying to avoid are going to be recanceled next year with the re-implementation of an unconstitutional law. It's crazy. I mean, we're... we're we and again, the word is from a lot of high-level sources, this is even hitting mainstream, but I heard it from you as well. The word is they did blackmail members of the Supreme Court. Oh, well, I did, no, I don't know anything about that. Well, you I, mentioned that, that, that the NSA can be used to blackmail people. Oh, yeah, I, well, I said, yeah, of course. I mean, the NSA can always be. That's my worry. I mean, they have congressional uh, BlackBerry records and everything. I mean, this should be a real problem for folks. And again, the NSA thing, when I mentioned the Fogg scandal, 
seems to be lost in this bigger picture because that nobody knows what to focus on. Is it the Obamacare crisis? Is it the HHS shaking down health insurance industries? Is it the EPA bankrupting the coal industry completely unconstitutional, you know, against the takings clause? I mean, where do we focus? And I think it's almost like one of these buckshot strategies rather than rifle slugs. Just fire the buckshot, and one of them's eventually going to hit, and nobody knows where to block because there's just so much going on right now. Even the, the Republican Party, even the, the, the libertarian wing of the Republican Party in Congress, nobody knows where to focus because there's just so much going on. I was about to say, we've only got about five minutes left with you, but I want to get into this with you and then talk about your book and the campaign here briefly. I know you can't talk about it yet, but I was sent an advanced copy, read it, total page turner. Uh, it's uh, Life Inside the Bubble. Folks can see I have the advanced copy right here. got it about a month ago, but so we're going to talk about when that's coming out. But uh, top Secret Service agent left because he wouldn't be dishonorable. That's all he said. He's with us, Bongino.com. Dan Bongino is running for Congress. But, sir, I want to expand on this briefly with you because you're one of the only people that's astutely said this. And I know this is their plan because I've read some of the uh, you know political warfare strategies the CFR puts out, and they admit this. That that's all, almost a plan is to flood so much corruption, bum rushing everyone, that it's almost like when criminals take over an area and break the will of the public and just set the precedent that it's a crime zone, that that's what Obama and crew were doing is just just rushing to the finish line, hoping that they gain a million miles. And even if we push them back half a million, they still win. Well, that's a great analogy, the crime analogy, because in New York, that's exactly what happened when I lived in New York. And how they stopped it was the broken windows theory, meaning at some point you have to draw the line and say, you know what? You get caught drinking in public, even though there's murders going on down the street, we're going to arrest you, too, because you may be the guy that's doing the shooting later on. And I think we have to take that broken windows theory to government now and say, you know, we're not even going to accept mild constitutional violations anymore. We're going to issue congressional subpoenas. We're going to put you up on the hill. And, I mean, what's going to happen in the IRS? Taking a, Someone in the IRS who used that to go after con congressional groups, why does someone come out in handcuffs over there? I mean, this was completely unethical. You start seeing people in the bracelets walking out and perp walking people who violated your constitutional liberties and people had testifying up on the hill every Thursday and Friday. Uh, I assure you something's going to change, but nobody's willing to do it right now. Your analogy was, was spot on. You know, before that, uh, you were also a decorated New York police uh, officer, weren't you? Yeah, that's right. I'm going from memory. I can't think of a better congressman than somebody that's been a, a, a police officer with a good record, then a great Secret Service agent with a great record right. who went public about, you know, the fact that he couldn't morally be there and is now running for Congress and is now having the entire political system co uh, come after you. When you have the rhino Republican leadership attacking you, that is a seal of approval to, uh, uh, for me uh, that you're a patriot. Uh, do you like the ideas of Rand Paul? Do you like Ted Cruz? I mean, tell us about just briefly in, in a minute or two your political philosophy. Oh, yeah. Mine's absolutely bedrocked in libertarian, limited government values. I always say to folks, they say, are you a Republican? I say, no, I have to run as one. This is a two-party system. But you know you're doing something right, Alex, when the barbs come at you from both directions. Uh, you know, a guy went after me the other day, uh, a, a D.C. lobbyist, former so-called Republican. You read what he has to say, a man who's profited handsomely off his insider connection. So you know you're doing it right when, bo when both parties are swinging arrows at you. So. It well, look at the former dead. head of the RNC, Steele. Sounds like, uh, you know, he, he's left of Lenin or something, to use that political paradigm. Uh, briefly, you told me off air, that, I mean, it wasn't a secret, but you said the New York Police Department is really waking up to political corruption now as well. Uh, what's happening there? Yeah, last time, I, I think it was last time we spoke, I mentioned a lot of my friends are calling me, and they're just astounded by everything that's that's going on up there with all of these these uh, the, the, the surveillance state in New York and some of the things you're being asked to do. You know, a lot of people are starting to say, hey, is this right? I think it was just assumed because it landed on your desk and had been vetted through some channels that this was all OK. And people may be a, may have been automatons in the past, but that's not happening anymore. A lot of folks, even some of my friends in the government are starting to call me. I'm sure you get some calls yourself and, and, and starting to question things that I don't think they questioned before. And I think that's going to be the uh, unfortunate legacy of the Obama administration, just if, if distrust with government was bad before he got in, 
it is going to be absolutely epic, uh, and unfortunately. Sure, so things have gotten bad, but the worm is starting to turn. Uh, lastly, how are you concerned that Obama will try to save his legacy, get his radical transformation of the republic through? Uh, because you're right, he's dropping like a rock right now. I'm really concerned he might start a war, he might pull something. What does your gut and what does your intel tell you about the future of Obama? Well, it's a propaganda war is what it is. He started it yesterday. You, I mean, why do you think he, he, he administratively and unconstitutionally wanted to turn the tide on this cancellation thing for your insurance? Because now he puts it back in the insurance company's laps, knowing they can't go reverse this. They spent three years doing it. He wants them to reverse it in six weeks. And then what's he going to say? Mark my words first. Folks, you heard, it, you heard it here first. He is going to stay in six weeks. Look what the insurance company did. They screwed you. I mean, that's a propaganda war that I would argue is even worse than some you know, some other kinds of, uh, of, of, of actions he take. I mean, it really, really does significant damage to the American economy, the American psyche, trust in our government. It, 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 this is really devastating. Sure. It's very sad to watch. Well, Dan, you know a lot about uh, criminology. I've read a lot of it just because it's so interesting. You know, actual criminology, not just the, the, you know, the paperback the crime novels and, 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 you know, crime history stuff that's, that's nonfiction. But... Good people tend to be blind to evil because we just don't think like that and can't imagine. And, and that's why a woman will get in the yellow Volkswagen of Ted Bundy, you know, because he's wearing a nice suit. We have to learn that they're worse than we even think. And you look at Cloward and Piven and the plan to socialize things and then make us uh, become collectivized. And you figure out it really is a plan. And that's why they're so aggressive. I mean, at a gut level, you've been inside there. You know what's going on. They know this is a plan to bankrupt America and, 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 and basically get everybody on the welfare rolls. Well, they, they can't not know. You'd have to not understand basic arithmetic. What they, Their goal ultimately, and it's the, the Keynesian principle in economics, their goal is ultimately to make government debt the only viable debt, to take away the private sector for a way to develop capital for your business. Not that's to right. get overly wonkers, but that's exactly what they're trying to do. No, that's it. They want a monopoly. Right, and, and, but you can't have that, Alex. If you don't run debt, you can't issue bonds. If you can't issue bonds, then they have to get bonds from the private sector, IBM bonds, corporate bonds, stock equities. They don't want that. They see the private sector as inherently exploitative, as destroying the environment. So what they do is they run up these massive debts, despite the economic apocalypse we're looking at, because they only hope that they crowd out the private market and your only wow. avenue for investment the government. And then they blame, and then they blame uh, for the capitalism. When this isn't capitalism, it's crony insider capitalism with socialism. Well, I can tell you Secret Service guys get an education in economics, but you really need to get in Congress. Dan Bongino, we'll talk to you soon. When's the book coming out? Uh, it's available for pre-order now on Amazon, Life Inside the Bubble. You grab it, you'll get it in a couple days. But you're not allowed to talk about it until it actually comes out, though. Yeah, yeah, I, I promise. When does it officially come out? November 19th is the official release. Okay, good. And I think you're on that week. All right, Dan, thanks for the time, and it's always great talking to you. You too, Alex. Take care, bud. Wow, I like that guy. I really, that's a real guy. I can tell you right now, my gut just says that's a good guy right there. Oh, I wish there, yeah, no, no. well, we'll see what he does in Congress. And then maybe Bongino for president. Anyways, the point is, is that, is that, uh, well, look, when you know when the Republican establishment doesn't like him, that, that's a good sign R right there. Um, look, if you care about your kids, you don't want to destroy the country. I mean, it really gets simple. And the reason the police and military are waking up is that they understand now that everybody can feel it, not just intellectually understand it, but feel it. We've got the devil looking over our shoulder. I mean, this is, you know, the willies. Uh, the, the, I mean, I think I'm getting chills right now. I just I think about how evil these people are and how creepy and how bad. And, you know, if I was in an alley and like two or three thugs were walking up on me, uh, acting like they want to mug me. This has happened before I grew up in Dallas. Uh, I'm the type of guy that just immediately says, what, you want to rob me? Let's do it. And then they usually back off. Uh, and I'm actually at that point hoping they do something. And it's not that I'm looking for a fight or anything. It's just that's the only time I can really turn into Ben Grimm is when I'm outnumbered. Then it's, man, I mean, it's like I, I don't enjoy hurting people, but I do enjoy it when they're bullies. Then it's like I want to kill them. And, and, and the issue here is, is it's a normal instinct of a man to not want to be pushed around and to want to stand up for justice and stand up for the individual. And I just, I just, I mean, look. I, when I was born, 
the Trilateral Commission had already existed for a year. And I was like four or five years old reading books about the trial, trying to read books about the Trilateral Commission, looking at the covers, you know, wanting to be able to read them. That's why I started reading so early, even though I wasn't good at math and other things, was because they didn't let me watch TV except for like PBS and Saturday morning cartoons. We didn't watch television except, you know, for that or, or maybe once a week gun smoke or something. And or my dad was out of town, my mom would let me stay up late and we watched John Wayne movies. But we didn't watch a lot of TV. We're talking three hours a week, not six, seven hours a day. And she'd watch the news while making dinner, a little TV in the kitchen. I remember that. My dad bought a little colored TV when I was like two or three and finally just broke last year. I ought to get that thing fixed. The point is, is that uh, still had it in the kitchen until about last year. It was like a, more like a radio than by that. It didn't even, it didn't even light up. We just turn it on, you know. UHF, VHF, she had it hooked up to cable. But uh, I ought to get that TV fixed if they haven't thrown it out. That's like an heirloom, man. The point is, is that, uh, I don't know why I went off into that story. Why was I telling stories about television? Oh, reading as a kid. So I would just look at the pictures in the books and read every book in the house. And they had all these books. And I remember so early looking at Between Two Ages by, by Zbigniew Brzezinski and wanting to read it. Then I read it when I was like 10, didn't understand it. Read it when I was like 16, kind of understood it. And I, and I think that's why I, growing up in college and just high school and everywhere, saw everything because I'd already read all the globalist handbooks that most PhD, you know, economics professors don't. I'm not bragging, saying I'm some smart guy. It's that this stuff is there, it's real, and you try to warn people about it, they go, oh, you're a conspiracy theorist, which is a crutch for their ignorance. Why is nascent iodine so important? Nascent iodine is so important because it goes directly to the thyroid. It's not bonded to a salt, which means it doesn't have to be broken down. And it's the most usable form. It's what the body uses. It's what the body is designed to use. If you have low energy levels, if you have pains, if you have thyroid problems, if you don't feel up to par, well, they've proven now that the fluoride and a lack of iodine causes a decreased IQ because you have all this stuff that builds up inside your system and builds up and builds up. And that's why some people, when they start taking iodine, will have what's called a Hertzheimer reaction or a detoxification reaction. But that's a good sign. That means you're detoxifying all that fluoride buildup, the mercury buildup in there, the bromine buildup in your system, and the chlorine buildup in your system. You don't want those things. All of those things have been proven as carcinogens. That's one of the reasons prostate cancer is on the rise, too, is because prostate takes up iodine. And the men that are lacking iodine causes the prostate to become cystic and causes the prostate to swell and eventually leads to prostate cancer. There's been an extreme rise in polycystic ovarian disease, PCOS, with women, fibrocystic breast disease, because iodine is stored in the breast tissue, the ovaries, the prostate glands in men. It's utilized by every single cell in the body. Mm, why does this almost taste good compared to other iodine that tastes horrible? That's because it's real iodine atomic form. We wanted something that's going to go straight into the bloodstream and straight into the thyroid gland. We wanted to put it in a vegetable glycerin base. That's a USP kosher certified vegetable glycerin base. And that product is not tested on animals. It's vegan friendly. It's gluten free. It's GMO free. Of all the things I've done, nascent iodine was just absolutely amazing. So we developed with Dr. Group a double strength, low price, InfoWars Life. Dot com survival shield the atomic nascent iodine available right now